gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes. And churn homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today, Around Kansas takes a look at some of the interesting people, places, and things in the state, starting with Robert Cowboy Culbertson, a man who has become the face of Kansas and the American West. Next, we take a look at the McPherson Opera House, built in 1888, and now on the National Historic Register. Then we'll learn tips about hunting morel mushrooms and enjoy a poem from Ron Wilson. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff. Progress. Powered by Kansas Farmers. This segment is brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. Just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Good morning from the historic Dillon House in the shadow of the state capitol in Topeka, Kansas. This is Around Kansas. I'm Frank Chafin. I'm Deb Goodrich Beisel. And, well, we're going to talk about some of the things we've been working on, some of the things that are coming up, and, okay, you go first. April has been an incredibly busy month. You know, I, I had my birthday. It was great. Thanks for all the well wishes. And on my birthday, I took a group from Brewster Place Retirement Home up to Fort Leavenworth for a visit to the fort. That was fantastic. <laughs> One of my favorite places in the world. And then on April 16th, I actually took a group from Benedictine College to Lawrence to uh, study the Lawrence Raid and the uh, Quantrell's Raid on Lawrence. Colonel Bill Raymond, retired from Fort Leavenworth, um, is the instructor there at the Benedictine College. So that was really wonderful. Wow. Okay. Well, and I've been uh, elected to the board of the historic Jayhawk Theater in Topeka. And its time has come. Of course, the renovation really started in 1996, but uh, various reasons or another, it just kind of sat there. But last fall, uh, there was an event we showed, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. It was awesome. Uh, just ahead of uh, Halloween. And the thing is, the hundreds of people that showed up came in and said, well, I've never been in the place. Wow, this place ought to be restored. So there's uh, a new excitement about restoring this historic theater. Uh, it was built in 1927. I've done some stories on it, and the thing is, is you'll probably see some more stories too. But uh, it's going to get opened up to the public. There are going to be all kinds of public events there, uh, movies uh, shown. Um, in the very near future, the uh, front part of the theater is going to be restored. There's going to be a, a concession stand so that when people come in for a tour, the first stop is going to be there and say, hey, have some popcorn, have some treats, and let's go see the place. Well, so. they're really lucky to have you on the board. It's a fantastic <laughs> place and a real treasure, and thank goodness that's being restored. Yeah. And, you know, your theater series all over Kansas, that's just awesome, Frank. Right. They're just jewels like that all over the state. Yes, and, and many of them have been restored, and, of course, that's one of the things I'm doing is I'm kind of going across the state and uh, visiting, talking about some of the opera houses and movie houses right. that have been restored and how the communities are making use of them now. Well, they're at, you know, they were the cornerstone of the community to begin with, and to bring them back to that status is really a great thing. Oh, yeah. And it's all about community. You know, here we are in Topeka, but Topeka is really a small town, as you and I well know, Frank. It it's, doesn't really classify as a big city. We've got a lot of the amenities of a big city, but we're really a small town. Everybody knows everybody. It's so easy to get around and, and it's just got a small town feel. Yeah, it is. So anyway, we have lots and lots of things to talk about, about the great state of Kansas, because there are so many things and people and places that make this an exciting place to, to live and to play and to work. Absolutely. So after the break, We'll talk about what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> <laughs> Biodiesel made from sustainable resources is diversifying our fuel supply. This year, biodiesel will displace over a billion gallons of fossil fuel nationwide. It's making our economy stronger and our communities healthier. 
It's working here and across America. Get biodiesel going in your community. Visit americasadvancedbiofuel.com. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. This segment is brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Welcome back to Around Kansas, and of course, what makes Kansas so special? The people. And I've been privileged, just as Frank has, to know so many wonderful people in this state. And of course, with me, some of those people might be dead. You know, they're people from the past, but they're just such wonderful people. So we're looking forward to sharing with you all the cool people that we've met along the way, maybe one at a time, you yeah. know, just some of the, some of the cool folks like, uh, since I've moved here, I've gotten to know the folks in the band Kansas. You know, we featured them on an episode of Around Kansas, uh, maybe a couple of episodes we actually did on them. And you've interviewed some really cool people. Frank, who's some of the coolest that come to mind? Well, of course, uh, in the music genre, there's Randy Sparks, who, of course, started the New Christie Minstrels back in the uh, 1960s. He's a native of Leavenworth, Kansas. And in his 70s, he decided, well, I'm going to form the New Christie Minstrels again and go on the road. And he's 82 years old wow. now. Uh, actually now lives in California, but the group is back together. And they're touring all over the world and, and doing concerts, and they're sold out. So there are people like uh, Randy Sparks out there. And, of course, then we go back in history and, and, and we look at uh, some of the... Uh, uh, well, maybe characters. Even, yeah, characters. maybe some of the, <laughs> the more notorious people and all of that. So we're, we're going to have some fun. We always have some fun doing Around Kansas. And I want to start today with my good friend, Robert Cowboy Culbertson. You have met Cowboy Culbertson before when we visited his ranch near Easton a couple of years ago. American Frontier Productions is Cowboy's home and his place of business. It's a movie set and a location for artists who want to paint western scenes and people. And when they are looking for that iconic western face, they need look no further than Cowboy himself. He cannot remember a time when he wasn't riding horses. Born in Leavenworth in 1957, Cowboy grew up working cattle on his grandfather's farm. In 1992, he and his wife Donna bought the ranch that has become American Frontier Productions. He trained horses and riders, and in 1996 met Jim Hatzel while working on his first film, TNT's production of The Rough Riders. It was Hatzel who told Cowboy that he had, quote, a great look and that he should do some modeling. So Cowboy packed up his kids, Josh and Amanda, also horse people, and headed for a photo shoot in South Dakota. He has been acting and modeling ever since. Cowboy has played everything from one of those rough riders for Teddy Roosevelt to Custer to a medieval knight and has appeared in numerous, numerous documentaries and feature films. Sometimes he has also provided his horses and his wrangling skills. What is most remarkable about Cowboy, however, isn't what he does, it is who he is. This lanky, aw shucks persona with pioneer determination, and his face conveys it all. Artist Les Lefevre said, he has a face that changes from hour to hour and day to day. It is a different, interesting, and definitely Western look. Dozens of artists have thought the same. Using Cowboy's image in more than a hundred paintings that now hang in galleries and homes throughout the country. His face is honest, interesting, optimistic, 
Artist Joe Velasquez described his, quote, devilish grin. Artist Ruth Ann Sturgill said that Cowboy and his family are, quote, amazing, good people, the kind we need more of in this world. Cowboy has become the face of Kansas and indeed the face of the American West. It's a good face. I'm Dr. Frank Lyons, a physician here at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. As one of the only standalone stem cell centers in the U.S., we use your stem cells as therapy for arthritis and some autoimmune diseases. I'm Dr. Andrew Poe. Here at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center, utilizing the latest technology under strict protocols, we're able to harvest your stem cells from your own fat to treat a variety of medical conditions. The best part about it is, it's a same-day surgical procedure and requires no general anesthesia. I will take action against herbicide-resistant weeds. I will know my weeds, and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand, and I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time for all time. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Around Kansas, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Today on Around Kansas, Frank is going to take you to McPherson. And Frank, in all your travels in McPherson, did you find out who he was named for? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Civil War General McPherson. And when I moved to Kansas at about 20 year, odd years ago, and I met people from the town of McPherson, they would, uh, they corrected visitors, you know, there's no fear in McPherson. <laughs> and so people who would come in and pronounce it McPherson would quickly be corrected. And I just love that saying. So they've got this gorgeous equestrian statue of McPherson, of General McPherson, there on the courthouse lawn <laughs> in the downtown area. Yeah. Gorgeous, what a beautiful town that is. Well, and the restoration of their opera house is rather spectacular as well, which uh, we're gonna talk about, of course. So uh, anyway, some other places around the state, uh, you know, I, I've kind of been dwelling on opera houses, but there are, there are a bunch of wineries now in the state of Kansas. At one time before prohibition, uh, Kansas was the number four producer of wine in the nation. Now you're uh, talking my language. <laughs> yeah, and now it's beginning to come back. And we've done some stories, but we're going to continue to do uh, some stories uh, about some of the wineries around the state as well. Awesome. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to have to horn in on that one. <laughs> I want to visit the wineries too. Yes. In the meantime, we're going to take you to McPherson. As you know, we're taking a tour around Kansas of the opera houses, and today we're going to uh, visit one of the more spectacular ones, the McPherson Opera House. It first opened in January of 1889. It had two balconies and seated 900. Now, the second balcony had no fixed seating, so patrons had to sit on the risers. It was redecorated in 1913, and murals were added by a renowned Kansas artist and writer, G.N. Malm. The McPherson Opera House was once described as one of the best examples of opera house architecture in Kansas. It is truly beautiful. In its early days, many touring companies, vaudeville performers, and even William Jennings Bryan uh, appeared there. It now is on the Register of Historic Places, and it was saved from destruction in 1996, and the restoration of the exterior and auditorium are now complete. Now, the move to save the Opera House began in 1986, but against what seemed like insurmountable odds, 
Well, it got saved. It was an $8.5 million project with the funding coming from individual donors, foundations, government and private grants, and state and federal rehabilitation tax credits. And McPherson voted for a half cent special use sales tax. Well, the Opera House gets rave reviews today from performers for the acoustics and intimacy of the 600 seat main auditorium. The Opera House is available for rent for many events. The McPherson Opera House. Yep, another great place to visit around Kansas. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Around Kansas, brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Yeah, we talk about people, places, and things around the state of Kansas, so let's talk about some things. And especially coming up very soon is the Kansas Sampler Festival. And of course, again, this year, it's in the eastern part of the state. And in case you're not aware, it moves around uh, every two years. Right. Well, it was in Wamego last year, and this year, it'll be in Wamego again. And let me tell you, if you want to get a sample uh, people, places, and things around Kansas. <laughs> Go to Wamego. It's the first uh, weekend in May. Right. So. And it's it's just spectacular. You'll be blown away. And like you said, it highlights everything. Uh, everything you want to know about Kansas. You got all those great characters from around the state in one central location. We did, what, three or four shows on the right. Sampler Foundation uh -huh. last year? So you can go back in the archive and meet some of those folks. A lot of them will be there again this year, right. I know. Um, I actually had a booth selling books, and so I know that uh, my booth mates will be back. We, um, we featured Aaron Barnhart and his wife, Diane Eikhoff, and Matt Dighton uh, from Greensburg. We featured him. We just featured so many folks. And you were talking about wineries before. They actually had <laughs> the whole winery tent, didn't well, they? Which yeah, was like the most popular, tent, yeah. <laughs> the most popular exhibit there, I believe. But uh, uh, Freedom's Frontier had a spectacular um, a tent with performers, so there's performers, there's just all kinds of great things. Yeah, and, and the Lohengrin biplane oh, too. Oh yeah, wasn't yeah. that beautiful? Yeah, of course those were made in Topeka, believe it or not. Yes, we were at one time the air capital. <laughs> <laughs> Before Wichita stole it from yes. us, we were the air capital of, <laughs> of Kansas. So great things around Kansas in spring, you know what that makes me think of? Hmm. Morel mushrooms. Just mushrooms springing, there is life springing up all around you, you just got to get out and find it. I had never eaten wild mushrooms before I moved to Kansas. My granny told me to stay away from all mushrooms. That may have been easier than learning the difference, since some mushrooms are in fact deadly, but even the novice mushroom hunter can learn to safely identify the morel, and more importantly, eat the morel. The real trick is finding them. Just like fishermen guard their favorite spots, morel hunters never divulge the location of their stash going to great lengths to avoid being followed on their picking sprees. Morels look like little brown or yellowish Christmas trees. If you slice one open, it will be hollow from the top to the base. They can be tiny, fitting in the palm of your hand, or 18 inches high, according to my friend Lloyd Zimmer, 
who once found them on that large on the bank of the Missouri River, but did not have a camera to prove it and did not have anything in which to carry them. So where is the best place to find morels since no one is likely to share their treasure spot with you? According to Larry Lonick in Mother Earth News, trees are just beginning to bud, so relatively unfiltered sunlight warms the earth directly. This triggers the appearance of a number of wildflowers, trillium, phlox, trout lily, Dutchman's bridges, violets, wild strawberries, and many more. These flowers, along with the temperature, are indicators of when to look for morels. Now the where isn't quite as simple. Where the spores fall, cross-pollinate and germinate is basically where they're going to grow after a five-year cycle of nutrient gathering and storage. Getting outdoors to hunt mushrooms is a great way to get the whole family into the fresh air, but take precautions. Wear long pants and sleeves and good shoes. No sandals or flip-flops. Make sure you use spray for chiggers and ticks and all those pesky little creatures. And careful too of snakes. I'm deathly afraid of snakes, but during mushroom season, I poke around in places I wouldn't have been caught dead in otherwise. And had I seen a snake, I may have been willing to fight over the mushroom delicacy. Do not pull up the morels. Break them off or cut them off above the ground. Make sure you take a mesh bag like the ones oranges are sold in. Paper and plastic keep the spores from being dispersed through the woods. And since the mushrooms are damp, can even cause them to spoil. Expert Larry Lonick adds, the spores are microscopic. The cap of each morel contains 250 to half a million spores. These spores must become airborne and then find adequate nutrients, soil, and moisture. The odds of successful reproduction are slim, but people can help the process by using the mesh bags for their catch. Oh, the most important part, eating the morel. Wash your morels with cool water and my mother-in-law told me to add salt. Honestly, that does help any little bugs that are hiding to crawl on out. Pat them dry with a paper towel. She also taught me to roll the morels in egg and then in flour and to fry them in butter. You can just fry them without batter or add them to your favorite recipe. Some people add garlic, but I think that just hides that wonderful morel flavor. Happy hunting. If you find a big stash, let me know. Oh, and invite me over for dinner. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Around Kansas, brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. Go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Years ago, we had a bad fire here at the ranch when our daughter was little. We lost an entire machine shed, and it was a traumatic experience for her. I wrote this poem about that day. It's titled, You Have to Cowboy Up. Daddy, what do we do, my little girl said, as we stared at the burning remains of our shed. The machine shed on our ranch had just gone up in flames with the tractors and trailers and wagons it contained. I looked at my daughter as she cradled her scared pup and said, at times like these, you have to cowboy up. You have to be strong, you have to be tough, you can't let hard times get, get you down facing this stuff. When you get bucked off, pick yourself up off the ground and get back on that horse to try another round. And if life gives you lemons, you just can't be afraid. Turn a negative into a positive and make some lemonade. Yes, we've lost our old machine shed, but that opens up some space. We'll be able to rebuild something better in its place. But Daddy, my daughter said with tear-filled eyes, think of all the work you did on those things inside. Yes, I said, as I thought of what we faced, it is a loss and there are things that just can't be replaced. But things are still just things. They're not the people that we love. We still have many blessings, thanks to the good Lord up above. So I held my daughter close as I drained my coffee cup and said, be brave, my little one. You have to cowboy up. Happy trails. 
closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff Progress, powered by Kansas Farmers. This is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes. And churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream.